liver is about one and a half kilo. This is the biggest solid organ. And from functional point of view, this is very important. This is like I already explained to you in anatomy too, and histology or whatever, like in physiology. This is like a factory. There are more than 500 or 600 functions. This is the main organ which is running almost all uh, metabolisms, if you remember. And if you remember all the functions from physiological point of view and biochemical point of view, you can explain all the symptoms here or like presentation. So what is the main function of liver? Let's, let's start with like uh, carbohydrate metabolism. So this is the main organ which is storing glycogen. If you remember, they can ask two questions. One is that which is the biggest organ or like where glycogen is staying much according to kilogram. They are asking about weight. If they ask about weight, then it is going to be muscles. Because muscle mass, if you compare, 40 to 50 percentage of your body weight is consisting of muscle mass. So technically, if you see overall, there's going to be a lot of glycogen staying in your muscle. So this is what, this is according to the size or the kilogram, which means we are talking about weight. Because the muscle mass itself is too much. Comparatively, we have much more because of the amount of muscles we have in your body. This is about skeletal muscle. But if they ask you a question, what is the organ which is concentrating much of glycogen? So if they ask from the point of concentration, this is liver. Liver has about 70 to 80 grams of glycogen. But liver itself is about 1,400 or 1,500 grams. And if you remember, glycogen is going to be broken down whenever you need glucose. So this is called glycogenolysis. So once you are starving, when you need glucose, you are not eating. Up to 24 hours, you are going to get glucose from liver by which mechanism? Glycogenolysis. Uh, you should remember a lot of things from physiology as well as from pharmacology. Which receptors are important? Which secondary messengers are important here? So now glycogen will be broken down. At last, it will become glucose because we have enzymes to break down up to glucose. In muscle, it is not possible to break down up to glucose because we don't have the phosphatase enzyme. Okay, in case you are having hypoglycemia, after 24 hours, who is going to give glucose to your blood? Again, it's going to be liver, but the mechanism is different. This is what gluconeogenesis. So the main organ which is running or which is operating with gluconeogenesis is liver. Second is kidney. So first 24 hours, whatever glycogen you have in the liver will be broken down. You are going to get the glucose into blood circulation. After 24 hours, all the glycogen stored will be exhausted because they are going to be broken down. So you need something else new. So you are going to produce glucose from non-carbohydrate products. So you get the carbon backbone and you convert it into glucose. This is called glucose. Neo genesis. Genesis means production. Neo is new. Glucose is glucose. You are making new glucose from non carbohydrate products here. So this will work after 24 hours. And keep it in mind once you are absorbing glucose, you studied about digestion and absorption, most of the glucose which is entering your portal vein is going to be absorbed in liver only because they are going to be stored as glycogen. So later on when you need glucose, this will break down and it's going to come as glucose. So this is very necessary. Now you can understand, once you have long lasting liver disease, or we can call it like chronic severe liver disease, you are going to develop hypoglycemia. Why? Because liver is destroyed, you don't have reserve of glycogen. So glycogen reserve is decreasing, so you don't have enough glycogen to break down when you need glucose. So you are going to develop hypoglycemia. So which means you have low glucose in your plasma. Another one thing, you don't need to have actually morphologic phenomenon in the liver. Sometimes you have some kind of biochemical or functional phenomenon. You still have glycogen, but you don't have enough enzymes or you don't have the machinery to break it down. In this case, glycogen will keep accumulating in the liver, but they won't be able to be broken down. In this case, you are going to develop hypoglycemia. So if you think about liver diseases, as we already explained, sometimes you don't find morphologic changes, there will be only functional changes. So first mechanism, you don't have reserve because liver is broken down. 
Oh, liver is like destroyed. Another one thing, liver is still not destroyed, but you don't have machinery to break it down, which means you have problem with the machinery. The next thing, if you have problem with liver, either you have problem with the machinery or the liver cells are dying off, still you won't be able to run the gluconeogenesis. So there are three mechanisms. Is it clear? Rarely people might develop hyperglycemia, especially when you eat glucose, you might develop hyperglycemia. I already told you, when you are eating glucose or when there is going to be digestion of carbohydrate, what is happening? Carbohydrate will be broken down, there will be monosaccharides, the predominant one is glucose, glucose is entering your? Where? Into which circulation? Portal circulation. Two third of this glucose which is getting into the portal circulation will be absorbed in the liver and it's going to be stored as glycogen and if you don't have this mechanism if you have a shunting mechanism in case of liver cirrhosis you have photosystemic shunting so the blood which is coming into liver is not exactly going through the sinusoid it's diverting in this case the glucose will not be stored there too you tend to develop hyperglycemia but this is transient so if they ask in case of liver disease both are possible but most predominant one or prominent one is hypoglycemia. So you can write in case of lab, but it's not specific.